How old are you? <laughs> That's um, what my partner does in LA. So I'm like, I'm playing Zelda, and then I'm done. And I stand up and I make some stupid joke, and he's like, 29, mate. <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> Farts are still funny. <laughs> So, so, the official starting word of any H323 <laughs> episode. I thought I would do some code this time. All right. Because it's been you, and I'm getting bored of that. So yep. I thought I would talk about something that I've been um, encountering and realized that's actually kind of new. And it's I mean, polyfills, which are not new, but conditional loading of polyfills in a world where we all use ES6 modules. All right, because it's quite an important thing to do now because we're in yeah. a situation where you know some browsers have like web components, some don't, and you don't want to yeah. be loading all those polyfills for all browsers. It can be quite big, but also you don't want to like go to the lowest common denominator all the time because that's not a great experience for you as a developer. All right, right. so let's come on, show me what you got. Right, this is not not polyfills yet, but for example, let's say I want to use transform streams. Personally, okay. I've been loving transform streams. They are amazing, yes. I, not only just to do streams, but I actually just use them as a, as a FIFO queue. For example, if you, wanna, if you have an event handler and you want to oh. make sure your previous event is completely processed before you process the next one, just pipe into a transform stream. Because the, if you're returning a promise from your transform stream handler, it's not going to give you the next one until exactly. all of that's resolved. And it buffers it up yeah. until then. And so that's actually quite neat. Very clever. Right. Hmm. OK. Problem, though. We have transform stream in Chrome. I mm. think they're just bound to land in Safari. They're not in Firefox. I should look this up. I don't know. But that's basically what I'm saying is the landscape is uneven in terms of support for transform stream. Right. So what you want to do is load a polyfill. Yes. And so in, in the olden days, you would just do this, right? You would yep. just put a script tag ahead. And you could be sure that that script tag would execute before the other one executes. And transform stream is fully polyfillable. For exactly. It's, complete, it's technically completely user land, but yep. you don't want to load that code usually. Right. So in this case, the polyfill would put their implementation on the global, mm. maybe even only if it is not already there. So you would use a native implementation because it might be faster. And otherwise, it just adds it. And then transform stream exists, and you can just use it. Great. Right. Brilliant. Problem now, of course, is it gets loaded every time. Yes. And you might have a browser that doesn't need to load that. It might be a lot of code. Like and if Chrome you, right now, like And if you can avoid Safari that, in, yeah. you would want to avoid that. Excellent. So now let's look into how you do conditional loading. And All that's right. where we already start looking into like oh. importy stuff. Because in the olden days, again, you would probably create a script tag dynamically and wait for the unload event. Now we have dynamic import. And this, I think this is something I got <coughs> wrong in a previous episode, because you can use the dynamic import even in a regular script. Yes, you can. That's very good. It's very exciting. You don't Excellent. have to use a module script to use dynamic import, only right. for static import. Cool. So in this case, I'm just taking, does transform stream exist on self? Yep. And if that is not the case, time to load the thing. Right. So this is a module that's not returning anything. No, so that's, it's a polyfill. It just attaches to the global. Right, OK, OK. But that's exactly the point. We are now preferring and advocating for people to don't in general, polyfills shouldn't do that. They mm. shouldn't attach themselves to the globals, because then you land in this place where you might be overriding a native implementation that might not be up to date. Or it's a, it can, there are so many complications. The whole uh, smoosh problem. Exactly. We right. don't want to have right. second smoosh. So the, usually, if you, if you publish a polyfill, use something that exposes just the thing to you. And you can decide if you want to attach it to the global or handle it yourself. Brilliant. So instead of a polyfill, you would use a module, ah. something that doesn't actually modify the global at all but just returns something to you that you can use. OK, OK. And so in this case, we're just importing and don't use it. So in this case, this will still be undefined. So this right. pattern doesn't work anymore. Right, because it's expecting like something around here to be returned, yeah. and that would be your module. Right, OK. So now we have a module that exposes these things. Yes. But you can't just attach them to the global because you have to load them ahead every time. You have to, at the start of your module, you have now to check, do, right. does it exist? Does it not exist? If it doesn't exist, hold the entire module until I've loaded the polyfill. Oh, I see. And then I have to modif load the module, rip it out, and attach it to the global. Right, because especially if it's like third-party code, you want all of yeah. that to wait somehow. And it gets until really is... weird. Right, OK, yep, yep, yep. So now let's move on to proper modern world ES6 modules. How could we solve this? The first 
version. Bracing for modern JavaScript. Boom. Oh, look at that modern JavaScript. We just turn it into a very, very small two-line module that loads oh, right. the module attached to the global, and you depend on this module in every other module that uses streams. Right, and we've, we've avoided the whole, I mean, this is still going to be asynchronous in terms of it's not going to block the main yeah. thread, but it's synchronous in terms of that code that comes after it because and it's And so this a is completely import. valid, completely acceptable way to go about it, right? You can, right. So this works in the sense that you load the polyfill, mm -hmm. and it touches the global, and all your code will now work for the polyfill if necessary. But we lost the, the conditional loading. Ah, yes, of course. Because conditional right. loading is not possible with static imports, because they're static. Yes, that is true. <laughs> That's kind of like it's it kind of hidden, and once you think it's like, wait, I cannot do. It. Yeah, you can't put an if statement around that. The import has to be either sort you of top, depend top on level. this module or you don't. Right. So the second you want to do conditional loading, you have to go to dynamic import, and then you're back huh. at the problem because now I have to hold my module until it actually under the polyfill is loaded, and that's really weird. Do you have a I hope this is going to end with a solution. I have a I solution. I don't think it's perfect, oh. but I actually have been using it, and it's quite nice. Because the second problem with static import is it delays the execution of the module, even though you might only need the transform stream in some specific method. Right, I see. I see. And that could be like a few that interactions away or, or exactly. something. Exactly. So right, you might right, want right. to load it at a deferred point or even on demand if it's some sort of background task. Excellent. So what I've been using is a different approach, which feels a bit weird, but actually, as a pattern, works really well. All right. I'm creating a promise. You are. Yes. And so I'm creating a transform stream promise. And that I can now use an if statement and check if transform stream exists, Ooh. I'm just going to return the native transform stream. I see. And if not, I'm going to dynamically load the polyfill I and see. return that one. Yes. So now that is we have doing. a promise that will always resolve to a transform stream constructor. Mm -hmm, and it mm -hmm. might be the native one. It might be the polyfilled one. But you don't have to worry about it anymore. Right. And that means your module can execute as fast as possible or as soon as possible and will load the code the second you need to. And so this is, this is going to be, you've got the asynchronous problem back, right? Sure. But that is usually, I, this is kind of specific to the point of streams, but most of the time, Streams are in a asynchronous context anyway. So that's true. Either on the sending side, you don't need to worry that it's a promise most of the time because it's already ex you can just resolve it in line. The function can return earlier and just wait for this form to resolve and then send it mm -hmm. because you don't need to worry about it. And on the receiving side, it's asynchronous anyway because it's a stream. So you most of them have an async that you can use await to await this thing. Excellent. So I mean, so this is this is a pattern that works really well for for code that. You're in control of, right? Because you're yeah. now using uh, transform stream promise instead of yeah. transform. If it's for third party code that is, rely that is expecting transform to be on the global, that's when you're going yeah. to have to sort of delay the loading of that. That third being party said, code. if you have third party code that relies on transform streams, something is a little bit. Oh, wrong, right? I'm, I've got mixed feelings about that because I see what you're saying, but then you could end up, if each library is loading a polyfill for transform streams, you've got the, you could end up with this problem where you're you're, you're loading you know, five libraries that are using transform yeah. stream, each loading their own polyfill, and unless they're using exactly in, the same in, version. In that sense, though, that's where you would dynamically load the polyfill, potentially the global, and then dynamically load the third the party, party scripts. Yes. Right? And just exactly. because I, some people might be disgusted by this pattern at the bottom, where you like await something and immediately call new. Mm -hmm. You can also write it in two lines, which might be nicer. Of course. Probably the minifier will go back and package it back up, because that's what minifiers do nowadays. And if you're and confident in that the polyfill is, is feature complete and the yeah. spec is settled, then th this is a point where you could assign it to the global if you were loading yeah. third-party code. But I feel like the promiseified constructor pattern is a really nice way of loading polyfills on demand mm. and showing for you to run as much code as possible with as little requests as possible at the start. And you're loading this ahead of time as well, but asynchronously. Yeah. So it, you and know. that's your choice now. You can decide yeah. when the loading happens. If you're like, actually, I don't need to load this right at the start. I can actually load it in request I will call back. Mm -hmm. You can do that as well. That's Brilliant. Things work now. Hulk is back. <laughs> Hulk is back. I mean, that's you your normal Have you seen state. my bicep? This is like. <laughs> Made of steel. <laughs> Made of soy, mate. <laughs> 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 <laughs>